Hello to all of our listeners, and welcome back to The Parent Solution, your one-stop shop for all things educational. I'm your host, Kimberly, and today I am continuing to talk about the Canadian government's further infiltration of public schools, specifically the newest edition in British Columbia and Alberta, SOGI 123. Now, if you listened to the previous podcast that was entitled SOGI 123, A Dangerous Curriculum for Our Kids, you would have been introduced to the SOGI 123 curriculum being enforced in particular school systems um, that are in, as I said, British Columbia and Alberta. So in this episode that happened a couple of weeks ago, I talked about uh, the different ways in which you as a parent or a caregiver um, could take action if you didn't want your children in school learning this sort of curriculum. So today I'm chatting about much the same, um, but with another key takeaway that I think is really important uh, for any curriculum, not just this particular one. Now, first, before we get to that, uh, so what's wrong with SOGI 123? SOGI stands for Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity. This particular curriculum focuses on facilitating discussion and awareness about sexual orientation and gender identity by, and I quote, enforcing programming in schools to create an inclusive environment, unquote. So now there's a lot of problems with this sort of mentality, um, but one of the biggest problems with SOGI 123 is that it teaches children that sex and gender are not inherently related, even though this ideology doesn't have any scientific or logical foundation. The key takeaway and the key question that I want to ask here is, is as parents and caregivers, we need to ask ourselves whether the SOGI 123 curriculum is really focused on inclusion or whether it's focused on indoctrination. There's a key difference. Inclusion means that everyone's opinion is respected and acknowledged. There's an understanding that as human beings, we have many, many differences, but we do have key similarities. Focusing on what's similar can, of course, enable us to work successfully together. Indoctrination is when only one opinion matters, and whether there's sound backing or not, that specific ideology is, you might say, force-fed um, to all persons in, in that environment. In obedience to this ideology is everything, and the basis of the thought process is supposed to be accepted without any critical thinking uh, or questioning. Now, SOGI 123 pushes the idea of inclusion, but it excludes the opinion and feelings of people who are not comfortable or parents who are not comfortable with this programming. Parents are expected to regurgitate or agree with this curriculum to their children at home without any sort of mindfulness of religious freedoms or expression um, or consideration that if the parent feels this curriculum is age appropriate in the first place. If a teacher speaks up against the SOGI 123 programming, they're in danger of losing their job um, or being accused of hate crimes. That's a very common accusation these days. When people are frightened into silence and information is being censored, whether it's in the news or in the educational space, the situation in that society has now become a problem. So as parents and caregivers and teachers, we must give thought to the fact that our children should be raised with the distinct knowledge of freedom. That includes freedom from indoctrination. Children should be able to think critically about everything, including SOGI 123. And if they don't agree with it, they should have a right to say so without fear of repercussions. So as much as the traditional education system wants you to remain silent as a parent or a caregiver or even a teacher, I'm here to tell you that you do have a voice. You need to use it. You do not have to be docile. You do not have to give up your rights and responsibility as a parent or caregiver. You need to help your child think critically. And when I say think critically, I don't mean think in a negative sense. I'm talking about encouraging your child's questions. I'm talking about encouraging their research to find the answers. You need to support your child to be confident if they feel they need to express an idea that's against popular opinion. You have to remember, it is the children that ask the hard questions, that question the status quo. Those are the children who grow up into the adults who think outside the box, who speak out, who stick to their convictions. And those are the people, those are the ones who will change the world for the better. Now, I promised a future episode on Loco Parentis, which contains a little bit more specifics about how you can do this within the school system, uh, as well as the power that it gives to schools to determine what is best for students and children in their care. 
how you as a parent can work around that. That episode is coming in December for those who are interested, so stay tuned. If you have comments or questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'd love to have a discussion with you. If you have any comments or questions, either about this issue or others that have come up for you, you can always find me on social media. It's Star Students on Facebook and LinkedIn or starstudents.learning on Instagram. You can also reach out through email, which is all over social media channels. Thank you, as always, so much for listening, and I'll be back next week.